Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Rodney, and I'm back. Before we get into hot topics, I wanted to say something. Somebody left a comment, and I was like, ooh, girl, that was a great example. So, you know, in my pre... Well, some of you have probably haven't seen the video, but in a previous video, I was talking about D.L. Hughley and some guy, uh, Dana White. Long story short... There's a guy, Dana White, I think he is the UFC president. Let me make sure. I don't want to be on her line on nobody. Um, you know, the last person that lied on somebody, they got sued for $4 million and lost. <laughs> well, the person won. If y'all don't know who I'm talking about, go Google it. Yeah, UFC president Dana White. Long story short, him and his wife were out, I think, New Year's Eve. Uh, she slapped him. He slapped her back. D.L. Hughley came out and said that if this was Chris Brown, Bobby Brown, Antonio Brown, um, and they did what Dana White did, the media wouldn't stop talking about it. Um, what can Brown do for you? Be white. Hashtag Team D.L. And my whole thing was... One of one of my issues with this was the men that he used in order to try and prove his case, which I think was a complete flop. You use men like Chris Brown, who has a history, who has a history of violence. Y'all don't remember Rihanna? Y'all don't remember Carucci taking out restraining orders? Okay, Antonio Brown. We were just talking about him throwing a shoe at his baby mama's head the other day. You couldn't have chosen any other black men to try and prove or drive your point home. And then I was like, girl, you could have used Barack, Papu, somebody. And then someone said in the comment section, I think it was V-A-V. -V. What's up? A-V! Okay. V-A-V! -V. That was uh, the shout out to you. V-A-V -V left a comment. I think it was you. And you said that basically Will Smith would have been a better it, like he could have, he should have used Will Smith if he wanted to try to prove a point. And I was like, oh my God, that's so true. If DL wanted to, let me say something. Yes, it is completely true. And I do believe it. That if this was, we know that black people are treated differently in the media period. And if this had been someone that was black, We will be talking about this. The media will be talking about this. It will be all over CNN, Fox News, TMZ, Girl E, Girl Access Hollywood for weeks to come. So I'm not going to sit here and act like that's not true because it is. If you would have used Will Smith, I think that would have made more sense, DL. At least with Will Smith, you could have said, if this was Will Smith, y'all would have vilified him. Look how y'all treated him when he slapped Chris Rock. So just imagine if he had, if we saw footage of him slapping his wife. You see what I'm saying? Y'all vilified Will Smith and he doesn't even have a history of violence from what we understand, right? And I'm not even, when I say y'all, I'm talking about some of y'all too. Because y'all was right, y'all was right there locking arms with the white people as they drug Will Smith across girl Cole's hell and back. That woman had that man had that man had one incident where he was where people said that he was out of line. And y'all treated him like he was Chris Brown. Y'all treated him like he was Antonio Brown. Y'all treated him like he was Dana White. Y'all treated like he, like he was one of those violent men out there putting their hands on people. He had one incident in his 50 plus years that we that, that that at least from what I know of. I'll say in the entertain while he's been in, while he's been in entertainment, he's had one incident. And y'all vilified that man. Sonny, all of you calling that man violent. So, yes, if DL was going to use an example to try and show how a black man who does not have a history of violence can have one outburst 
and you vilify him, he should have used Will Smith and not no goddamn Antonio Brown or Chris Brown. I think sometimes what it is, and this is another issue that I had too, I think sometimes what it is is that y'all want to be able to get away with the violence that white people get away with. That's all, that's all I read. That's not what you say, but that's what I see <laughs> and that's what I hear. Right? And it's not your problem what I see and what I hear, but that's what I see and that's what I hear when I hear some of you complain about not being able to get away with the same violent acts as white folk get away with. When we already know they come from a history of violence. Oh, you know what shocked me today? Um, and I follow her and I don't even see this, but I don't be out on her page like that either. Judge 10, uh, Judge uh, Lynn Toller, girl, I literally yelled. Her husband passed away. Her husband passed away. And, you know, I'm not really in the, 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 the business of kind of like just talking about deaths because I feel not with all deaths, okay? But with some deaths, it's kind of like, what can you really say? I mean, I guess you could give the person their flowers, but I mean, girl, if you ain't gonna give their flowers while they're here, then it's kind of late to me when they gone. Um, give people their flowers while they're here, okay? But it's kind of like, girl, what can you say? It's sad they died, you know? But this was really sad to me because I followed Judge Lynn for years and I used to love her show and I used to love the fact that I felt like she wasn't one of those dumb women over a man, a man even with it being her husband, but I also felt like she loved and adored her husband, if that makes sense what I'm saying. And that's why I low-key used to go for her. Like, I don't like no dumb person over no man, but I also can appreciate someone who loves and adores her husband at the same time. And I always felt like that was her. She never gave me dumb woman. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But that's my husband. That's my man. Okay? You know, and so when I saw that when I saw that she had announced that he had passed away, it kind of it made me kind of sad for her because I knew how much she loved her. I ain't gonna say I know, but I felt that she loved her husband a lot, and even the way that she would speak about him. You know, I hope she's okay. She says she's in a million pieces. I'm sure she is. You know, also I think you know. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you know, she's also had, you know, struggle with like mental health a little bit. So, you know, when you take that into account and then her husband is not here, I just hope she's okay. I hope she's okay. So shout out to Judge Lynn. We love you, Judge Lynn. Oh, I want to say I love Judge Lynn. I want to say, baby, she is probably one of the few that like I agree with like 100% of like 99.9% .9 of the stuff that Judge Lynn used to say. Your I used to be like, yes, ma'am. I used to go up for her. Like, I, I felt like she was one of the smartest women on TV. And I felt like she gave some of the best advice. Now, I don't know how she, I don't know what she doing over there on. Because I ain't showing on, show on another show now. Was it Love and Marriage, Boot Camp, something? Now, I don't know what she doing over there. But I know on her show, on the on a Divorce Court, um, I felt like she gave some of the best advice. The best. And she used to get into the men and the women's tales. So shout out to Judge. Shout out to Judge Lynn. <clears throat> you know, can I say something? 
when it comes to like football, you know what I think? You know what I think that it's like, it's weird to me. And girl, people can watch what they want to watch. Because I know nobody's going to stop watching football, right? I'm going to watch what I want to watch. You're going to watch what you want to watch. But I do think it's weird that when you, you, you think about this sport, and football is a violent sport. I don't care how you try to slice it and dice it. It's violent. Anytime you have men on a field ramming their bodies into each other with the possibility that it could result in death or them not walking off the field, being carried off the field, I think that's a little violent. I also think it's weird that girl, for some people, for a lot of people, clear, not even some, for a lot of people, they look at that as a form of entertainment. <laughs> like, when I think of a form of inter entertainment, girl, I think of Beyonce doing an old nasty A count. <laughs> okay? <laughs> All the people like it, okay? That's what I'm thinking about. <laughs> I'm not really thinking about, like, girl, let me turn, like, when I think about people who watch UFC, or, you know, some of you who are fans of boxing. Like, when you, when I sit, like, how is that entertaining to you? But that just goes to show how violent of a country that we are. Well, we find stuff like that to be entertaining. And then we're shocked when someone, could, when someone, you know, is one foot into glory. Like, why are, like, in real life, it's many stories, and I don't even watch football. I've heard stories of these players being hurt, being carried off the field. It's almost like I feel like what people are saying is because we haven't seen someone die yet, even though there's been one death on record, I believe for the NFL, even though we haven't seen someone die yet, then that means this is not that big of a deal. Do you see what I'm saying? But then when someone gets hurt, people then act surprised. How are you surprised that someone got hurt when you look at what they're doing on the field? Like, I'm surprised when Beyonce fall down a flight of stairs. Because nobody expects her to fall downstairs. Like, I'm surprised like when, when an airplane goes missing. Because nobody expects an airplane to go missing. I'm not surprised when a player gets hurt on a football field. Look what they're doing. <laughs> I would expect someone to get hurt. I would expect someone to almost die. I would. Do y'all see how big these niggas are? These niggas be 300 pounds ramming their bodies into each other. Y'all don't know why these men be having CTE and be halfway gone and, and are only in their 20s and 30s? Hello? <laughs> like, I'm not even trying to be funny. Like people being hurt, people don't care about. Like I don't, I don't think that you can watch a sport like football <laughs> and then still say that you care about the players because you see how they're being treated. You see how, girl, it's the niggas on the field, girl, the white man being protected with the football, like the Tom Brady's the white people in the box watching these niggas destroy each other. And then when it's all said and done, because how much you want to bet that if that, if that man, Daymar, doesn't come back to football, they just going to dispose of that man like ain't nothing happened. You think they're going to really take care of him and his family? After he damn near probably died on the field? But then y'all going to be right back to watching football <laughs> when Rihanna performed. That's why I was saying in my last video, like, what's the point of getting all worked up? It's one thing you can acknowledge a situation, say that it's sad, but what's the point of getting worked up when all you're going to do is to be watching next week? <laughs> you're like, just be like, it's a sad situation and then move on. You want to fuss and cuss and still engage.
That's like me getting upset at someone for saying say, saying something homophobic or transphobic, but then I still listen to them. Girl, just shut the fuck up and say, just don't just be like, okay, girl, I, I'm like I said about Kaya. Kaya says some of the most outrageous shit, but I still support Kaya, but I still support Kaya. What's the point of me getting on here hollering and screaming about what Kaya saying if I'm still gonna turn around and support her? Just shut the fuck up and listen to her. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I feel. Like, what's the point of y'all have been so outraged about how these players are treated in this game of football if all y'all gonna do is fucking watch anyways? Just shut the fuck up and just watch the game. The biggest way to show people that you don't support what's going on is not to support. You can't support the game, but then you can't support the game, but in the same breath, it's like you want to march on Monday. It's like, it's like you want to watch the game on Sunday, march on Monday, then watch the game on Sunday, march on Monday, watch the game on Sunday, march. On, like it don't, I feel it's like a mind fuck almost. And they know y'all not going to stop watching. Look how y'all did Colin. No tea, no shame. Y'all had y'all did all that y'all had all that outrage and uproar. All Jay-Z had to do was come to the NFL, throw a couple of niggas on the halftime show, and y'all were satisfied. Y'all I ain't heard y'all mention Colin Kaepernick ever since they brought Jay-Z in to help with the whatever he was trying to help with. He done threw a couple of niggas into the, the he had Dr. Dre them last year. He brought Rihanna this year, and everybody is happy. Ain't nobody mentioned shit about no knee on no Colin Kaepernick ever since. So like I said, girl, even that what happened to the young guy the other day, girl, y'all gonna fuss and cuss about what Skip said, but bitch, y'all still gonna be watching watching the game next week. So at the point, at the end of the day, what the fuck are we talking about? I got to do things my whole way, darling. Lamar Odom claims he didn't use drugs the night he overdosed at a Nevada brothel in 2015. Claims owner tried to kill him. <sighs> Lamar Odom insists he did not intentionally consume illegal drugs the night he overdosed in Nevada in a Nevada brothel in 2015. The former Laker claims that the late ranch owner Dennis Hoff attempted to drug and in, in, girl I already said the word K-I-L-L him girl. Um, the athlete claims he has no idea how the drugs that nearly ended his life ended up in his system. Odom was discovered unconscious at um, Hoff's Las Vegas brothel on October the, the 13th, 2015. Lamar claims that he had one drink and awoke three days later without the ability to talk or move. In 2019, Odom alleged that his attorney examined his accusation against Hoff and located employees at the brothel who supported his claim. I don't want to say Lamar is lying, but... Lamar, didn't your best friend also die of an overdose? Like, I'm sorry. Like, it's almost hard for me to believe what Lamar say. Like, <sighs> Lamar, you on that shit. You was on that shit. Girl, you was there partying, taking shit. Girl, I don't know what type of shit you was. Y'all don't know if you was injecting shit in your body, sniffing shit, swallowing shit. I don't know. But you was on that shit. And they sit here trying to act like, girl, this man done set you up. The U.S. life expectancy drops to the lowest level since 1996. Oh, girl. I need to, girl, I need to, I got stuff to do. <laughs> girl, I got stuff to do. Girl, y'all trying to kill us off, honey. No, ma'am. Um, new, federal, new federal data show, uh, show that the life expectancy in the U.S. has fallen to the lowest level in 26 years. Um, last week, it was determined that the death rate 
uh, jumped 5.3% from 835.4 per 1,000 people to 879.7 uh, per 1,000 in 2021. Life, life expectancy decreased in 2021 to 76.4 years for the second uh, consecutive year, down from 77 years in 2020, the lowest number reported since 1996. Although the, the, uh, uh, the decrease of 0 0.6 years is not insignificant, it is smaller than the increase of 1.8 years between 2019 and 2020. Um, they say COVID and drug overdose deaths are primarily responsible for the drop. According to a baby, you can't really do nothing about, you know, COVID, but y'all better leave that shit alone, that other shit. I get people do their recreational drugs, you know, but some of that shit. You know, can I say something? This is a girl. People do what they do. Girl, I've been around some of everything and I don't be caring. All, I will say this much. The only thing that I have never been around, and if I was around it, I would probably get my shit and leave because that, that's not, even if I don't do drugs, but I don't even want to be around nobody who do it. It's like, I've never been around anybody who's brought out like needles and rubber bands. Now, bitch, when that happened, oh, bitch, baby, I got to go. I got to go. You know, I'd have been around some of all the other shit. You name it, <laughs> pills, powder, <laughs> girl, <laughs> I don't care what the girl. Let me say something. I don't give a fuck what the girls do. They don't have nothing to do with me. I have my cocktail. You do what you do. I ain't going to say nothing. You ain't going to say nothing. I know you ain't going to say nothing because you doing it. But, bitch, I'm not going to say nothing, girl. We don't care. Everybody just doing what they doing, honey. <laughs> so, I don't be giving a damn. Um, but, girl, if you are going to partake in any type of recreational you know, activity, girl, y'all get what I'm trying to say? Baby, at least know where your shit is coming from. That'd be one of the issues, too. Y'all just be out here doing all types of people's stuff. Y'all don't know where it's coming from. You need to have that one person you get your stuff from. I mean, don't do it. Just say no. Let me just put that out there. Just say no. Say no to drugs. Um, but if you are someone who likes to dibble and dabble, at least be responsible, right? Be responsible, don't be dabbing in everybody's shit because you don't know everybody. You don't know where they got that shit from, okay? I'm just saying. <laughs> I got to do things my own way, darling. Aaron Hernandez, uh, ex-fiance accused of mishandling thousands of dollars of daughter's trust fund money. Well, y'all say y'all all want to talk about a trifling bitch who mishandled money, so here we go. <laughs> okay. Um, they always trying to spend their child support money. Watch, there's going to be some niggas out there, girl. <laughs> girl can I say something? Well, I want y'all to stop comparing. I want y'all niggas who pay $150 a month in child support to please stop comparing yourself to bitches who, getting tr who got trust fund babies. Your child ain't no trust fund baby. There ain't ever going to be no trust fund baby. Girl, you pay $250 a month in child support and you think you can compare yourself to Kanye West who paying $200,000. Shut up. Shut up! Anyways... Shahanna Jenkins Hernandez, the ex-fiance of Aaron Hernandez, is being accused of mishandling trust fund money set aside for their daughter. According, according to the Boston Globe, the allegations were made by an attorney overlooking the trust, uh, David Swartz. Uh, matters began to unravel in September when Jenkins Hernandez said she couldn't afford her daughter's 10697 bill for dance, uh, dance lessons. Uh, Jenkins, um, her Jenkins Hernandez then asked trustee David Swartz to pay the bill with money um, from the trust fund, but Swartz declined. According to him, Jenkins Hernandez was already receiving $150,000 a year. If that's true, bitch, you trifling. Use a trifling bitch. That money's supposed to be for your daughter and her future. 
And you probably out here spinning on. Now, y'all want to talk about trifling bitches? Y'all finally got a trifling bitch we could talk about. This hoe right here. You swear you sitting that money aside. Now, that's one thing. Now, do I expect that bitch not to buy her at least one Chanel bag? No. But, girl, you doing all of that to the point where, girl, they talking about you mishandling the funds? And why are you going into your daughter's trust fund when, girl, they say you're already getting $150,000 a year? Or is that the trust fund? Either way it go, girl, you trifling. Oh, trifling heifer. <laughs> Following the birth of love, uh, Sean Combs, Diddy Fouts trademark application for Diddy plus seven. Diddy recently welcomed lucky number seven, Love Sean Combs. Since the little one's arrival, the entrepreneur has filed a trademark application for Diddy plus seven. What do you think he has planned? You know who, you know, you know who fine? That Quincy. How old is Quincy? That Quincy, what's his name? Quincy Combs? Quincy Brown, is that his name? What is his name? Quincy Brown. How old is he? Oh, he's 31. Okay, child. Girl, he passed the age test. Yeah, you know, some of y'all been nasty motherfuckers. We talking about 18. Oh, nasty bitch. I'm talking about y'all gay niggas too. I was watching. I was watching something the other day, and it was this gay guy. He's like 40. And he has a boy. He was involved with a boy who was 21. Ugh, gross. No, the boy wasn't even. I think he was 20. I think he was 20 or 21. He broke up with the boy. He said he needed somebody more. He needed somebody more mature. But I think the guy that he's dating now is younger than the other guy. Don't don't think it's just, let me say something. Don't think it's just the straight niggas out here who be preying on these little girls. It be the gay niggas too out here preying on these little boys. And then y'all wonder why these boys, just like these girls, grow up and are just fucked up when it comes to relationships because you got grown-ass 40-year-old men out here taking advantage of 20-year-olds and 19-year-olds knowing damn well they don't know shit. They don't even know shit about life, okay? You know they don't know nothing about no goddamn relationships. Y'all make me sick. Let me look at Quincy. Let me go. Let me, let me go to Quincy page. Let me go. Let's go to Quincy Page. Hold up. Is this this nigga? Is this him? Let me see. Let's see. Quincy a little fine. I ain't going to lie. Quincy a little fine. You a little thin. You know, I'm not really into thin guys like that. You know, like my man, he a little too thin for me. We could sit down and watch a movie. Well, here go another one. This thing right here, what's his name? Maluma? Malama? Maluma? It's that nigga right there. Girl, yes! A bitty bitty bum bum! A bitty bitty bum bum! A bitty, a bitty, a bitty bum bum! That thing so fine. What's his name, y'all? Maluma? M-A-L-U-M-A. Uh, y'all know who I'm talking about. Kim Porter was so gorgeous. Yeah, Quincy Hill is too thin for me. We can watch a movie, though, and rub on each other's thighs. I know that's right. Come on. Come on, it's a thigh rub for me. 
Girl Takeoff's alleged killer released on $1 million bond. So Neighbors Takeoff's alleged killer has been released on a $1 million bond according to court documents. Um, I'm sorry. Girl, that didn't say nothing about you. Girl, I, t- I told y'all. Sometimes, I really think I need to go to the doctor, girl. Sometimes I be seeing words that are not here. I see letters sometimes that are not here. Like it says, uh, it says according to court records. And I said according to court documents. God be telling y'all. <laughs> It's not funny. It could be like a serious condition, but girl, y'all be seeing words sometimes that don't be here. Um, sometimes I see letters that are not there. Yeah, child. Um, according to court records obtained by um K H O U eleven, Patrick uh Clark posted his one million dollar bond on Wednesday last week. A George, a judge, a George. See, a judge ordered uh Clark's bond to remain at one million dollars. His attorneys were hoping to get it reduced down to three hundred thousand. His bond was originally two million, but it was then uh, reduced to one million nearly two weeks later after defense attorneys argued that the original amount was excessive and went against the Texas Constitution. So he got a, so he got so that means that he had to pay at least a hundred thousand, right? That is true. Shout out to my friend Dee Dee. Well, we call her Dee. I don't know why I said Dee Dee. Because he was hold the fuck up. He was just asking for five a uh, five thousand. Wasn't he just asking? Wasn't he asking something about five thousand dollars a couple of weeks ago to retain a private investigator? Hold up. Remember? Did he, y'all? I think we talked about this. Okay, here we go. The man charged with fatal shooting of Migos rapper Takeoff has asked and been granted $5,000 by the court. Yes, I knew I was in trouble. Okay. Girl, how you got a a $100,000 just sitting around? Even you could pay that in like, I don't think it necessarily has to be in cash, right? But that means that you still, but some of it got to be in cash. I don't know how that works, girl. But it's just crazy how he posted that bond for a hundred thousand dollars because you were just in the court begging for five for five thousand for a private for a private for a PI basically. Mm, girl, y'all be safe out in them streets, honey. It's real. It's a real cold, cold world, baby. All right, I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.